Hello, friends of the internet. I am your host, Austin Belzer of Austin B Media, and welcome to the 2021 Real Awards Ceremony, the first ever recorded ceremony. Um, it, it has been a long journey getting here. It's been seven months since I sent out that massive eligible film list. I think there were, if I can remember, remember off the top of my head, there were 649 feature films in that list. That was basically every film of 2021. Um, if you're wondering why it's taken seven months and why I'm uh, why I delayed this by four months, um, because as some of you are aware, um, this was actually supposed to happen before the Oscars and before the Spirit Awards. This was supposed to happen, I think, in January. I think January 14th or something like that. Um, the reason that didn't happen is I got busy uh, with a bunch of other stuff, and I just couldn't make it happen. So I thought uh, it was not a conscious decision in January, February, March, April, um, but it became one as I got closer and closer to today, which is my second anniversary of Austin B. Media launching. And for those who aren't aware of what Austin B. Media is, I write, record a bunch of other things, um, and, and I talk about movies, I talk about television shows, I talk about video games, I talk about technology, um, I talk about music sometimes, I talk about basically everything under the sun, um, and I, I just do that out of fun, and, and uh, I, I, the closer I got to this two-year anniversary, I thought, okay, what would be a better date than the day I'm celebrating my two-year anniversary? So that's kind of the genesis of it. That happened like a week or two weeks ago. Um, and now I'm recording with this, which seems crazy. And now you're watching this on YouTube. Um, thank you so much um, for watching. It's I never thought um, I would make it to two years, much less record a ceremony. I mean, I know... It's kind of a laid back vibe. I've got my headphones on. I'm looking at a monitor. I don't, but hey, I dressed up. I dressed up for you guys. So, but um, in that regard um, about production quality, uh, do not expect Oscars quality, Spirit Awards quality, BAFTA quality, anything that you'd consider professional. Um, Full disclosure, I'm recording this in OBS right now because I didn't want to record it in Zoom. Um, I, I, I did a test recording and I have seen no problems. Um, but anyhow, um, I want, this was originally intended to be a live stream, but as those who have watched my live streams can attest, this computer, this laptop I am recording this on, uh, is not capable of live streaming. It's got eight gigs of RAM. It's 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 a nice computer. It it just isn't capable of some things that live streaming needs in order to work. So, in that vein, I'm I'm doing this as I would do a live stream. Um, no cuts, no fancy. You're not going to get cl clips or anything like that. Um, it's just going to be flying off the cuff. Um, now, may I pause and maybe collect myself? Maybe. I've, this is my second attempt at recording it. So there are failures of this scheme. But um, before we get into the show, um, I want to make some disclosures really quick. Just really quick. Really quick. Um, there, since... The nominations announcement in January, I think January 12th or January 14th or something like that, um, I saw five, four movies um, as of this recording um, after the nominations. Um, and those movies are Belfast, Flea, Petite Maman, and most recently, The Worst Person in the World, um, which decided one big factor. Um, and then there are nine movies I still haven't seen. 
Um, captains of the Atari, Roaring Twenties, Not Going Quietly, Plan B, Malignant, House of Gucci, Respect, Dear Evan Hansen, and Everybody's Talking About Jamie. I have not seen any of those nine. Now, the reason I make those disclosures, I feel like awards bodies sometimes need to make these disclosures. Um, because sometimes I feel, when I'm watching the Oscars or Spirit Awards or things like that, or not so much the Spirit Awards, um, go listen to my podcast with Claire uh, of the W-rated podcast uh, for more insight on that. But essentially, I feel like sometimes people, awards voters will vote on what is most popular or they'll see, you know, oh, hey, I remember that film. I, 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 I think this is good. But they don't actually see it. Um, and those kind of disclosures are actually really important to understand the context of the category and the award. So, um, and another disclosure, um, I have made the decision this year to remove... Um, um, gender-specific term, terminology from my acting categories. So instead of best lead actor or, or best lead perform, uh, best lead actor um, and best supporting act, actress and all, all, all those gendered terms, um, I've made the decision this year to eliminate them. There's no best lead actor. There's no best lead actress. There's no best supporting actress, best supporting actor, best debut actor, best debut actress. Um, there is just, um, and I'll change the terminology next year to be a little bit more concise about this point, um, but we live in a world where um, people have many gender identities. Um, there are, um, there are men who have transitioned into women. There are women who have transitioned into being men. Um, there are people who are thinking of transitioning but just can't quite afford the um, process. Um, and there are people who choose to be... Um, I, I don't know what the term is, so I won't try and say it, but um, but um, I, I, I forget the words, so I, I just won't say it. So take that in mind. So to accommodate for that, um, what I've done is instead of the standard five in a category, you see 10. Um, in fact, m most of these nominations are completely unrestricted um, by... Th these nominations are completely unrestricted, so take that in mind. But there's the finalists are only have 10. I hope that makes sense. Um, so... Let me present the categories in order of presentation so, so that you can be informed. We will have, in this order, Best Production Design, Best Supporting Performance, Best Costume Design, Best Debut Screenplay, Best Lead Performance, Best Cinematography, Best Stunts, Best Song, Best Debut Performance, Best Editing, Best Overall Film, Best Makeup, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Hairstyling, Best Documentary, Best Debut Film, and Best International Film. And the reason I am presenting it that way is much because of the way award shows already do it. Um, it's because um, it, 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 it wouldn't make much sense to just go through the list because if I went through the list, we'd be starting with best overall film and that just doesn't seem simpatico. So without further ado, let's discuss the winners, the nominees, and then the winner of best production design. For best production design, we have Fiona Crombie and Elise Fettens work on Cruella, Patrice Vermette and Zusana Zippos work on Dune Part 1, 
Adam Stockhausen and Rena D'Angelo's work on the Merge Dispatch, Jade Healy and Jenny Oman's work on the Green Knight, Martin Wist, Cynthia Lajunese, and Jay Hart's work on The Harder They Fall, David Grotman and Imogen Lee's work on The Humans, Arthur Max and Jude Farr's work on The Last Duel, Dan Hermanson's work on Nine Days, Tush Toshihiro Isumi's work on Prisoners of the Ghost Land, Guy Hendrik Dias and Isim Zolan work on Spencer, and the winner for Best Production Design is Jade Healy and Jenny Oman's work on The Green Knight. Jade and Jenny, thank you so much for your work on The Green Knight. It is the epitome of the best production design. It is astounding. It is breathtaking. Every frame of the set, you just look at the sets and they're just fantastic. It's beautiful, um, especially towards the end of the movie. There's just this greenery. It, it, it's fantastic. I love it. Thank you so much for your work on that movie. Next up, we have Best Supporting Performance. And the nominees are Jamie Dornan for Belfast, Marley Matlin for Coda, Troy Kotzer for Coda, Jeffrey Wright for The French Dispatch, Ann Dowd for Mass, Reed Burney also for Mass, Ruth Nega for Passing, Timothy Spall for Spencer, Robin De, De Jesus for Tick Tick Boom, Anderson Danielson Lai for The Worst Person in the World, and Coleman Domingo for Zoa. And the winner for Best Supporting Performance is Ann Dowd for Mass. Ann Dowd, your performance is particularly astounding. Um, particularly in a work, in a, in a world, I mean, uh, in a movie, actually, um, where there's so much complex character work. You've got Jason Isaacs, Reed Burney, um, so many other actors to, that I'm thinking of bouncing off my head, and it's just, it's astounding that your performance is, is such a standout performance performance. There are no words. I hope more people seek out your other work um, because I think to, uh, it, it, it's just a master class performance. That's all I can say, really. It's beautiful, beautiful work. And next up, we have costume design. And the nominees are Jenny Beaven, and Claire Sprague for Coella. Sammy Sheldon for Eternals. Jacqueline West, Bob Morgan, Stacey Horn, and Lilla Basfari for Dune Part 1. Malgosia Trzanska and Kiara McArdle for The Green Knight. Antoinette Massam for The Harder They Fall. Shanti Yates for The Last Duel, Marcy Rogers for Passing, and Jacqueline Duran for Spencer. And the winner for Best Costume Design is Jenny Beaven and Claire Sprague for Cruella. I mean, this is a, quite an obvious win. Um, Cruella would not be the film it is without the, the costume design. Um, there's... I, I don't want to spoil some of the movie for people, but there is a particular uh, there are particular dresses that are so inventive and, and just awe inspiring that reminisces of twenty seven dresses, um, just so many bold costume designs that are are simply fantastic. So thank you, Jenny and Claire. 
Next up, we have Best Debut Screenplay. And the nominees are, let me get there, Zach Balin for King Richard, Fran Kranz for Mass, Michael Rianda and Jeff Rowe for The Mitchells vs. the Machines, Edson Oda for Nine Days, Rebecca Hall for Passing, Vanessa Block and Michael Cernowski for Pig, Prathis Cernavazon and Joshua Levy, Plan B, sorry if, if I mispronounced it, Prathi, and the winner for Best Debut Screenplay is Fran Kranz for Mass. You know, his, his screenplay here is Simply astounding, not only because he's the guy from, um, oh shoot, why do I, why am I blanking on this? Um, he's from The Cabin in the Woods. He's the stoner guy from Cabin in the Woods. And you don't think, oh, he has this story within him. Um, but strangely enough, he does. Um, and it's inspiring to see such skilled work come from that this place of an horrific place, really. You know, you sit you sit down and think about watching Mass, and you're like, "Oh, hey, what's it about?" And then you're like, "Oh, it's about that." But it, there's so many small intricacies that Fran um, brings into Mass um, that I could I, I could sit here for two hours, probably just dissecting some of the little things he does in the film. But I won't do that because we have other categories to move through. And the next one is best debut, no, no, sorry, best lead performance. Sorry about that. So for best lead performance, the nominees are, come on, Adam Driver for Annette, Amelia Jones, for Coda, Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Dev Patel for The Green Knight, Will Smith for King Richard, Jason Isaacs for Mass, Martha Plimpton for Mass, Winston Duke for Nine Days, Tessa Thompson for Passing, Nicolas Cage for Pig, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog, Kristen Stewart for Spencer. We're not... Um, Rian's the worst person in the world, and Taylor Page for Zola. Apologies if I mispronounced any of your names. Um, I'll just apologize right now um, because I'm, I'm not the best pronouncer of words. Um, so with that said, the winner of the Best Lead Performance Real Award is Nicolas Cage for Pig. Um, it, it, it is a performance that I think only comes around once every few years. You know, you think Nicolas Cage, you think serious role. And you don't, well, you don't think of it, really. Um, he is primarily known for movies like Face Off, Con Air, Next, Knowing, um, so, or more recently for The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent which I still have not seen sorry Nick um, but it, he evokes the most complex of emotions um, with just his just the way he can move his face because there are some times where he's not talking there are times where he's just still but he can look at you in a way, sorry for bumping the table. Um, he can look at you, he can look at the camera or the person in a way that tears at their soul, that evokes, elicits rather, an emotional response. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, go watch it on Hulu. In fact, most of these movies are streamable. I'll have 
links to stream them somewhere. But Nicholas Cage, you absolutely deserve this. I've enjoyed your work. Even Ghost Rider too. That that was a lot to go through, but Ghost Rider two was it was fine. Um, Ghost Rider one was better. But Nicholas Cage, I thank you for that performance. And with that, we move on to best cinematography. And the nominees are as follows. Oh, this is going to be a hard one to pronounce. Haris Zimbarlu Close for Belfast. Grieg Fraser for Dune Part 1. Ben Davis for Eternals. Robert D. Yeoman for The French Dispatch. Andrew Dros Palermo for The Green Knight. Mihai Malimer Jr. for The Heart of a Fall. Lal Crowley for the, for the Humans. Alice Brooks for In the Heights. Um, Patrick Scola for Pig. Ari Wagner for The Power of the Dog. Claire Mathon for Spencer. And Ari Wagner for Zola. And the winner is... I'm, I'm sorry, Robert Yeoman and Ari Wagner, but you did not um, win this year. Instead, Greg, Greg Frazier uh, won for his cinematography of Dune Part 1. Um, this is... Um, the reason I, I think this one is... It, this, Greg Frazier is, is just a great... has a great eye, as, as I've talked about with the Batman. He... He knows when to just be present in the moment. Uh, what techniques to use? What um, just just what thing he needs to do in order to elicit? Hey, this is a big deal. Or hey, th there there are so many dark moments in Dune Part One. Like there's a moment where. I, I understand this is CG, where a little um, device gets right up close to, um, I forget the main character's name, I, I apologize. Um, Paul, Paul Atreides. Paul Atreides' face, and there, there's this in, interesting interplay between the black levels of the room, the white levels of the thing he's he was looking at while, you know, um, being in his room, um, and this little fly thingy um, that's right in front of his face. It's just astounding. And so many other moments I could bring forth, but um, thank you so much for that cinematography. I, I, I imagine you'll be visiting us again next year um, for the Batman, um, but who knows? Maybe you'll get in the mid-year real awards. Who knows? And with that, we're moving on to best stunts. Yes. Yes. We include stunts. Oscars, please catch up. Um, because stunts are what make an action film great. I, well, any film, great. Um, if you've got any kind of action in your film, you want a stor stunt coordinator, a stunt assistant, rigger, uh, stunt doubles to be able to perform and be able to just create a, an illusion that nothing is amiss, that no, no, no. These are the actual actors doing these stunts. Um, so with that said, here are the nominees for best stunts. And I will warn you, some of these uh, nominees lists are long. Um, so apologies if... Uh, just apologies. Um, because there are a lot of... It takes a village to, to do these stunts. So... 
with that said, here are the nominees for best stunts. For Black Widow, Madeline Aki, Katie Bullock, Lucy Cork, Mickey Facinello, C.C. Ice, Sarah Lazito, Sarah Lachlan, John McDonald, Rob Mars, Michaela McAllister, Adrian McGaw, Casey McMichaels, Heidi Menningmaker, Lucy Jane Murray, Katie O'Donovan, Nicole Redinger, Dina Sudano, and all the other stunt performers, riggers, stunt assistants, stunt coordinators, and stunt doubles for the movie Black Widow. Next, we have Dune Part 1. And, and the nominees are as follows in this film. Janae Attila, Morgan Benoit, Gervin Bramble, Yesenia Cosio, Janai Kasaba, Mahali Gabor Dalski, Tara Kadush, Yosef Kavilik Jr., Yosef, uh, nope, that's on there twice, Geza Kovacs, Nobert Kovacs, Tibor Milos Krisko, Laszlo Kiss, Istvan Draco Markolt, Richard Negi, Bella Orsania, even Orsania, Orsani, sorry, Abdella Osek, Gabor Pre, Gabor Perok, Robert Rekje, Istvan Istvan Rubitsky, Tomas Rydval, Andres Suregi, Merck Svet, Gilly Tothand, and all the other stunt performers, riggers, stunt assistants, stunt coordinators, and stunt doubles for Dune Part 1. And for Eternals, Dacio Cabrero, Let Craddock, mm. Talila Craig, Joe Kennard, Katie McDonald, Zoe Purdy, Anton Simpson Tidy, Segura Smith, John Sway Zhang, Baya Zaganas, and all the other stunt performers, riggers, and stunt assistants, stunt coordinators, and stunt doubles for Eternals. For the harder they fall, um, actually, really quick note, um, since, since this is actually getting a little long in the tooth, uh, I'll just leave those um, names to, um, to uh, the text version of this. Um, I apologize, but um, I'm not great at pronouncing these names, and I don't want to mess anyone's names up. Um, so for the stunt performers, riggers, stunt assistants, stunt coordinators, and stunt doubles for the harder they fall, um, Malignant, The Matrix Resurrections, Mortal Kombat, No Time to Die, Chong chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, and The Suicide Squad. And the winner is No Time to Die with a team of Daniel Adams, Ben Collins, Elizabeth Donker, Curtius, Safi Al Masri, James Embury, David R. Grant, Peter Gwenny, Jessica Hooker, and all the other stunt performers, riggers, stunt assistants, stunt coordinators, and stunt doubles for No Time to Die. Thank you uh, so much for those stunts. Um, I'll be honest, I watched something recently um, that detailed all the CG work that went into No Time to Die, and I did not realize just how many stunts you guys did. Um, so thank you for creating the illusion that this was all just Daniel Craig and Leah Sidhu um, performing these wild, wild stunts. And again, apologies um, to the names I didn't read. Um, I, I, they, they will be included in the text version. It, it was no disrespect was meant. Um, I just want to be able to honor everything um, on video with, uh, without stumbling. Um, so I apologize again. The next category we have is best song. Um, and this is just like, 
let's see. This include I will say this includes uh, non-original. Um, so it doesn't. When I say best song, it doesn't mean best original song. It means just any song in any movie. Uh, if it was performed in the movie, then yeah, it goes in here. So the nominees are. So may we start performed by Adam Driver, Marion Cotillard, uh, Simon Helberg, that which was written by Rios Karak, Ron and Russell Mayo for Annette. The next nominee is Down to Joy, performed and written by Van Morrison for the movie Belfast. The next nominee we have is Beyond the Shore, performed by Amelia Jones, and it was written by Nick Baxter, Sian Hader, Marius de Vries, and Matt Dehan for Coda. Our next nominee is The Anonymous Ones, performed by Amanda Stenberg, written, which was written by Benj Pasek, Dustin Paul, and Amanda Stenberg. Uh, for Dear Evan Hansen. Apologies if I uh, mispronounce uh, your name. Any of those names. Uh, and from the same film, uh, we have A Little Closer, performed by Colton Ryan, also written by Binge Pasek and Justin Paul. The next nominee is Surface Pressure, performed by Jessica Dara and Darrow and written by Lynn manuel Miranda for Encanto. The next nominee, nominee, is This Was Me, performed by Holly Johnson and Richard E. Grant, and it was written by Tom McRae and Don Gillespie Sells for Every Everybody's Talking to Jamie. Um, I almost slipped up there and said Everything Everywhere All at Once, which I also have not seen. Um, the next nominee, um, another Len manuel Miranda joint, is 96,000, performed by Anthony Ramos, Corey Hawkins, Daphne Rubin Vega, Dasha Polanco, Gregory, Gregory Diaz IV, Melissa Barrera, Noah Cat, Catala, excuse me, and Stephanie Beatrice, which is written by Lynn Manuel Miranda for the movie In the Heights. Our next nominee is the titular No Time to Die from No Time to Die, which is which is performed by Billie Eilish and written by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. And our final nominee for best song is Come to Your Senses, performed by Alexandra Shipp and Vanessa Hudgens, written by Jonathan Larson for the film Tick, Tick, Boom. And our winner is the titular No Time to Die from No Time to Die, written by Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell, performed by Billie Eilish. Um, I, this will be no surprise. Um, I, I mean, I was rooting for 96,000. Um, personally, because I will listen to that anytime I need so something to motivate me to write. Um, it, it, it is a banger. Um, a, a lot of these are bangers. I mean, uh, so maybe start, um, uh, surface pressure, 96,000, uh, come to your senses, all great songs. Um, all great songs. Um, although they I, I do slightly prefer the Suburbia Sextet, but they didn't release that till after these nominations were live, and they did not submit it for anyone's consideration. So it does not, it's not, it doesn't exist for this film. Um, but yeah, No Time to Die, I think, is one of the best Bond songs of the Daniel Craig era. That's all I've watched. Um, so, uh, the other ones are on my list of shame, uh, the ever-expanding list of shame. News about that today. Um, but, uh, yeah, No Time to Die is such a great film. Um, I, I, I don't see... I, I don't see a, a time in which this didn't win. So, congratulations, Billy Eilish and Phineas O'Connell. And our next category is Best Debut Actor. I'm sorry, best debut performance. Sorry, I I, writ, I wrote it wrong. Um, so let me fix that right now. Okay, so our nominees are Jude Hill and Olive Tennant for Belfast. Separate nominees, but same film. Max Harwood for Everybody's Talking to Jamie. 
or about Jamie, everybody talking about Jamie, not to Jamie. Um, Leslie Grace for In the Heights. Josephine Sans for Petite Maman. Um, and I, I do not know, know how to pronounce her name. I apologize. Uh, but um, So I, I apologize for the pronunciation. Minghara Zin. Yeah, that's probably not how I pronounce it. For Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I apologize um, for that pronunciation. Um, yeah, that was not my best. But um, the winner of the real award for best debut performance is Jude Hill. Um, I recently saw Belfast, as I attested to earlier. And yeah, his, his, perform, his performance is astounding. It is the thing other than uh, maybe... Maybe I would have said Jamie Dornan for Belfast. Um, it, I, I don't think he was nominated. No, he was nominated for uh, supporting. Okay. Um, yeah, other than the, um, Jamie Dornan and the supporting, I I would have picked this out of everything. I I liked um, I liked Leslie Grace's performance in in, in the Heights, um, and I liked. Josephine Sand's performance um, in Petite Maman. And I liked um, Mrs. Zing's performance in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, but for me, what put it over the top was just... Uh, and there's a scene I can't spoil, but there's a... There's a thing that happens midway into the film that I just think puts them over the top for me. It, it is... I... As Emperor Palpatine says in uh, episode one, The Phantom Menace, um, I will watch his career with great interest um, because I I, th I think he's got a lot uh, coming up that I, I think, I, I think if he gets the roles, I think he will. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. Um, and then we have Best Editing. Um, let's see, where's that? Best editing. Okay. And I will apologize for all these pronunciations because I can already tell I am going to mess these up. So apologies to all these editors. Um, I can't say words today, so. The nominees are Una Ni Jianghali for Belfast, Joe Walker for Dune Part 1, Janice, uh, Janice Bless Gov Jansen for Flea, Tom Eagles for The Harder They Fall, Myron Kirstein, Kirstein for In the Heights, Yang Hua, Hua Hu for Mass, again, so sorry for that pronunciation, and Kirk Mori for Malignant. Um, just a reminder, I have not seen Malignant. Just a reminder, um, and the Winner of this is goes is Claire Simpson. No. Yeah. Claire oh sorry, I did not read the entire thing. Sorry. Let's rewind. The nominees for best editing besides everything I just said are also Claire Simpson for The Last Duel, David Marks for The Night House, Sebastian Sepulveda for Spencer, and Joy McMillan for Zola. And since I spoiled the winner, let's just come right out with it. Claire Simpson won for The Last Duel. Um, editing is key to this film. Um, anyone who's watched it knows what I'm talking about. Uh, again, so sorry for hitting the table. Um, but... It, it it is. I'll I'll just say this without spoiling the film. Um, it is a film that challenges your perception of events. Just as the main character, I apologize, I forget her name. Um, it, it it questions your line of logic as well as hers. Um, so it makes for this wonderful interplay. Uh, as grisly as that sounds. It makes for this wonderful interplay of just everything. It it, it 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 is 
a beautiful editing job. So Claire Simpson, thank you for your editing on this film. Next up, we have the biggest award of the night. Um, and I will say this. It was a struggle to get here. Um, it, 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 and when I mean a struggle to get here, um, what I mean is it, it, it's... It's hard. To, it was already hard to narrow down from 649 films into, I think, what is something like 10, something like that, um, films, nominee, nominees um, for this category. It, is, it was ridiculously hard to get this down to best, uh, to 10, and then even harder to get it down to where it is now um, because we actually had a four-way tie. Uh, um, well, yeah, a three-way tie, but um, that, that existed just before I started recording this. Um, actually, I had to go back and I had to do a recount um, of this um, because so many answers were so dissimilar. Um, um, a lot of the voters picked different films, and I, I was the tiebreaker. So without further ado, here are the nominees for Best Overall Film of 2021. Belfast, Coda, Dune Part 1, Eternals, Flee, The French Dispatch, The Green Knight, The Harder They Fall, The Humans, In the Heights, King Richard, Mass, The Mitchells vs. the Machines, Nine Days, No Time to Die, Pig, The Power of the Dog, Spencer, and The Worst Person in the World. So, you may be thinking, that's an expansive list, right? That's just a huge, huge list. How can you possibly get it down to, like, whatever you get it down to? Well, I polled people again be because that's what you do when you have ties. Um, I will not say what the ties were, but it came very close. Um, and my viewing, uh, my, well, future viewing... Uh, uh, from when I'm recording this, but past viewing for the people watching this on YouTube, uh, on the YouTube premiere, um, the winner of best overall film is Mass. Um, actually, I guess I can say, well, I, I, I forgot I have the ties over here. Um, so, the ties were as such. Mass, Pig, Fleet, and Coda. I was the Coda vote. I'm the, I, I guess I'm the only one who likes Coda, but the Oscars liked Coda. I mean... But I conceded my vote because out of these four, out of these four, um, I thought that Mass is the clearly... When I think best overall film, when I think of that, I think, okay, what is the film that best, you know, represents the caliber of films of 2021 or even the best overall piece? That's why I say best overall film um, is because it's not only representative of the quality of films in that year, but also because it is the best overall film. Um, it is, out of 649 other films, the best film of that year. So, Mass, congratulations. I'm pointing a lot. I'm doing aggressive gestures. I would have preferred... Um, I, I wouldn't say I would have preferred another film, but... 
it, it, it is, I, I, if you would have asked me if I thought Mass would be best overall film, that would not be what I thought. I thought everyone was going to go for Coda or Pig or Licorice Pizza or something or, or um, the worst person in the world. That did not happen. And that was interesting because I just kind of assumed we'd go with the populace. But Pig, Flea, Coda, I'm sorry, but you did not make it. But Mass is such a great film that it trumps everything. It, Mass is such a good film. Go see it. Gosh, goodness. If, if you do nothing after this um, video, go see it. Go see it now. See it now. See it now. With that theatrics out of the way, speaking of something that's very important, best makeup. Um, and for best makeup, we have... The nominees are Nadia Stacy and Carolyn Cousins for Cruella, Francis Hannon and Karen Cohen for Eternals, Audrey Doyle and Barry Gower for The Green Knight, Jenna Carboni, Goran Bonstrom, and Sarah Nicole Tano for House of Gucci, Alexis Continente and Daniel Lawson Johnston for The Last Duel, Barbara Roman Barreto and Marguerite Mar Margie Durand for Passing, Amber Arpin and Pamela Warden for Pig, Stephanie Stevie Martin for Respect, Wakana Yoshihara, Sion Wilson, Stacey Payne Pinto, and Nicola Isles for Spencer. And look, we already know what this is going to, right? You, you know what it's going to. House of Gucci, right? Yeah, you know, House of Gucci, right? Well, you are wrong. Um, aggressive gestures. Um, the the winner of the best makeup real award is Nadia Stacy and Carolyn Cousins for their work on Cruella. I mean, anyone who's seen Cruella, watch it on Disney Plus. I am also check out my review. Um, it, it's just exquisite. I, there's no other words for it. it. It is exquisite. It is some of the best makeup work I've seen in the film. And I've seen most of these films. I, I haven't seen House of Gucci or Respect, but um, Pig had great makeup work. So did Spencer, so did Passing. Uh, it, it is really just so good that it just blows the competition out of the water. So Claire, uh, Nadia and Carolyn, uh, thank you for your makeup work on Koala. I hope to see what you do next. I, I, I'd be very interested. Um, maybe it's not as a, much of a blowout as this one. Uh, and then we go on for best director. We have, for our nominees, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Sean, ha Sean Hader, uh, for Coda, Den Denis Villeneuve for Dune Part 1, Jonas Poor uh, Rasmussen for Flea, Wes Anderson for The French Dispatch, David Lowry for The Green Knight, James Samuel for The Harder They Fall, Fran Kranz for Mass, Edson Oda for Nine Days, Michael Cernowski for Pig, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, Pablo Lorraine for Spencer, and Janixa Bravo for uh, Zola. Not Bravo. Um, not, yeah. Um, so the winner, obviously, is Jane Campion, right? Right? He, and yeah, or, or um, Pablo Lorraine, right? Or Michael Cernowski, right? No. Our winner of the Best Director Real Award is Fran Kranz. He Again, I, I've said this with his best debut screenplay, but it is such a masterclass in filmmaking. I have have not seen anything quite like it in quite a while. Uh, I know I'm an amateur movie critic, but still, um, it is astounding what he does here. Again, if you have not seen this movie, 
go watch it. I think it's on Hulu in the U.S. Um, I'll have links to stream everything down below in the written version and also this version, I think. Um, with that, let's move on to another te technical category, Best Screenplay. And our nominees are, oh, this is short, uh, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Sean Heater for Coda, John Spates, Denis Villeneuve, and Eric Roth for Dune Part 1, Wes Anderson, Jason Schwartzman, Roman Coppola, and Hugo Guinness for The French Dispatch, David Lowry for The Green Knight, Stephen Knight for Spencer, Joachim Trayer and Eskil Bot uh, for The Worst Person in the World, Janixa Bravo, Jeremy O'Harris, David Kushner, and Isaiah King for Zola. And those are our nominees for Best Screenplay. So what do you think won? Coda, Dune, French Dispatch, Green Knight, Spencer? Hmm? Well, this might come to a sh as a shock, but an international film won here. Joachim Trier and Eskil Vought won for the best, the worst, that, that would be an interesting sequel, the best person in the world. No, this is the worst person in the world. Um, now, future me can probably comment on this a lot more. He's probably commenting right now. Oh, look at, look at that comment. Wow, look at that comment. Wow. Uh, let, let's look at the proper area. Um, but yeah, the, um, what a great film. Um, I already knew that before I watched it. Um, I'm probably telling you all about it now, right here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a, such a great film. I want you to see it. Um, it's, I don't think it's streaming anywhere. That's actually quite a surprise for Neon. Um, usually they stream all of their movies through Hulu, but I actually had to go out and uh, not buy this one. I had to rent this one. Um, so future me, take it away in the comments right here. Um, and with that, we've only got a few categories left. We've got five categories of the 18 left. Can you believe it? And we're only, fifth, uh, we're less than an hour. Wow. We're, 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 we're uh, more efficient than the Oscars here. Look at that. So what do you think about the winners so far? What do you think about the order in which I presented this so far? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And also, I'm probably talking about it right now uh, in, in the uh, little chat bar over here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts so I can get feedback. In fact, I'll probably drop a Google form there right now if I, future me remembers. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'd love to get your feedback so that when we do the 2022 Real Awards uh, and hopefully have a, a, a bigger budget um, we can maybe do, uh, integrate those things, maybe like Oscar clips, or maybe even live stream it live. Maybe. And um, in case you don't know, it, it'd be I'd be really grateful uh, on this as a kind of birthday gift for Austin B Media. It, it'd be cool. If you could go over to patreon.com slash austinbmedia, I'm probably already talking about that right now over in the chat. Uh, I have a link right there, probably. Um, and just th throw me a buck. Um, and, and that gets you a whole bunch of stuff that I'll be talking about later today. Um, I, I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Um, but yeah, just if you think this is worth it, uh, maybe you want to hear more or read more or listen more. Uh, and I'd be so grateful for you to do that. Um, and patreon.com slash Austin B Media is the best way to do it. You get 24 hour early access. You get to see some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you get, well, did I mention 24 hour early access? I did. Um, but just so much more. Uh, it's, it's, think of it as, you know, Disney Plus, you know, CNN Plus, rest in peace. Um, Patreon is kind of my Austin B Media Plus. Think about that. I mean, that's kind of 
what you should think of that. It's it, it you get all the you get most of the same content, but you just get even more of it. More more is better, right? Plus, awesome B media plus. But with that, let's get to best hairstyling. And wouldn't you know it? I think this has the same nominees from best makeup. I think. I think. No, it does not. So for best hairstyling, we have Nadia Stacey and Carolyn Cousins again here for Quella, Francis Hannon and Karen Cohen for Eternals, Eileen Buggy for The Green Knight, Frederick, Frederick Espiras and uh, Giuliano Mariano for House of Gucci, Alexis Continente and Daniel Lawson Johnson. Yeah, Lawson Johnson for The Last Duel, Barbara Roman Barreto and Marjorie Duran for Passing, um, Lawrence Davis for Respect, Wakana Ushihara and Sean, Sean Wilson, and Nicola Isles for Spencer. Sorry, I got. I got kind of thrown off there because it felt like I was reading a different category. It happens. Sorry. But who do you think um, who do you think won here? Do you think maybe Eileen Buggy? Hmm, maybe. Maybe House Gucci? Maybe. Uh, maybe Last Duel? Good. It could, it could very well happen. It's, it's crazy to think that it happened. Passing? Maybe. Well, I hate to disappoint those of you for for all the other nominees, but again, Nadia, Stacy, and Carolyn Cousins take best hairstyling for Koala. And yeah, um, not much more I can say about their uh, work. Um, makeup, their makeup and hairstyling is great. Um, they invent so many new shapes and sizes of hair in this, which seems like a weird thing to say, but it just looks so exaggerated and full of life uh, in a London that feels so drab and disgusting, and it, it, it feels natural, too, in, in, in a weird way. So Nadia Stacy and Carolyn Cousins, thank you so much for your hairstyling work on uh, Cruella. And I hope to see what you do, do next. Next up, we have one of my favorite categories. Best documentary. For that, we have the following nominees. Captains of Zatari, Citizen Ash, Flea, Homeroom, In the Same Breath, Not Going Quietly, Pray Away, Rita Moreno, Just a Girl Who Decided to Go For It, Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain, The Sparks Brothers, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, and Val. So, what do you think won? Do you think Val won? Do you think uh, Not Going Quietly won? What about Pray Away? What about Roadrunner? Sparks Brothers? What are you thinking? Let me know. Right, right there, right, uh, right there. Yep. Let me know. I'll be, I'll be curious. What are you thinking? Oh wow, you think of that? Hmm, interesting. Well, uh, in quite the appreciated move, I, I love this uh, pick um, because it is such a unique pick that I think. Um, I would have loved to have seen at the Oscars, to give a hint. But um, to kill the suspense, that is Flea. Flea won the real award for best documentary. Why? Because, well, it's, it is the best documentary. Um, it, it mixes animation with... Um, it just is so visually inventive. That I couldn't not give it to Flea. I mean, I don't even think there was any contest. There was no contest on Flea winning. Um, there was no contest on Flea winning at all. Um, that's how good Flea is. I mean, I saw that 
after it was nominated uh, for a real award, but I do not regret seeing that. I love, I love Summer Soul. Um, it's a great movie. Um, and I, I, I still love that movie. It'd be a close second for me. Um, but I think Flea is the better documentary. It, it, it just is. I, I, I feel like I also would have loved to have seen it win the best film. Um, or, no, I'm sorry, that's Drive My Car that it won to win uh, Best Picture at the Oscars. And now we only have two categories left. There are also film categories. This Best Debut Film and Best International Film. So, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, what do you want to win? Let me know. Right there. Be curious. But I will not keep you in too much suspense. As I look for them. Okay, so the nominees for Death Best debut film are The Humans, Mass, Nine Days, Passing, Pig, and Tick, Tick, Boom. So what do you think, uh, what do you think is going to win? Let me know. I'd be very, very interested. I love The Humans. Um, it's a great film. Um, it, it, it's it's a bit more play focused than I would have liked, but the humans is really great. Uh, Mass is great. Um, uh, Nine days, I feel like an under underdog here. I feel like that could be an underdog. Uh, Passing, I love that film. Um, not enough praise went to that movie, so maybe that gets it. Um, Pig, as I said, with the Nicolas Cage performance, great. Great performance, great movie. Michael Cernowski, I can't wait to see. Um, I think he's directing Quiet Place, uh, the prequel movie. I think they just got a title for that. I think it's like day one or something like that. Uh, and then Tick, Tick, Boom. I don't need to say how much I love Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, wish I had reviewed it when it came out, but you live and you learn. So you got your, you got your uh, predictions in? Cool, 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 cool. Um, well... I hate to uh, kill the suspense, but the best debut film and the one that will win the 2021 Real Award for Best Debut Film is, to no one's surprise, Mass. Yes, Mass won. It is such a phenomenal film as evidenced by the goodness how many, how many did it win so far? One, two, three, four, five. Five wins. This marks its fifth win um, out of the 18 categories. Um, and it's nominated in how many? Nine categories or something like that. Um, but yeah, Mass, I can't say enough about this film. Go watch it on Hulu. Um, I'm pretty. I'm ninety percent sure that's where it is, but don't quote me on that. And then our final word of the, of the night, and I'm so glad the randomizer I picked uh, picked this as the last film because, sorry, we keep in, um, because I think best international film is something that goes underappreciated. It used to be called foreign language film. Uh, it used to be called foreign film. It's now called, I think, international film. Sometimes it's called something else. Um, like, I think it's like best, I think the BAFTA is like, say, best film not in the English language or something like that. But with that, I, I, I love this category. Um, because it is so expansive and so unique. I haven't seen some of these films, um, as I'll talk about later, but um, I was the tiebreaker on this one. I'll just let you decide what that means in the comments right there. I keep pointing outside the frame, so right there. Nope, right there. Yep. 
um, or somewhere along the right side of the of, of the frame. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I always think international film gets the short shrift, so I'm just going to expand it a little bit. So what was your favorite international film? Please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear it. So, without further ado, here are the nominees for the 2021 Real Award for Best International Film. Got it? Good? You're good to go? You? you you're good? You? Do you, need, do you need to go get Dr. Pepper? Go get Dr. Pepper. Hit pause and go get Dr. Pepper. You want coffee? Mm? You you need you need tea? Tea? I'll, I'll I'll take a sip of tea. Let me just mute my microphone first. <sighs> sweet sweet tea, made by Lipton, the South's official. Si Favorite drink. Sorry, Milo's. I, I like you, but I like my tea better. So, you, you done guessing? You done guessing? Okay. Okay. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't leave you guessing. I won't leave you guessing. So, the nominees for Best International Film and the reason my voice is going out <clears throat> are Captains of Zatari, Flea, I Carry You With Me, I'm Your Man. Petite Maman, Roaring Twenties, and The Worst Person in the World. So, uh, what do you think, uh, what do you think is going to win? What do you, what do you think is going to win? Uh, did you see Roaring Twenties? I doubt you did. Um, unless you saw it at Sundance. I don't, I don't think. Uh, did you see I'm Your Man? That's a great movie. It's on Hulu. I Carry You With Me? That's a great movie. I think I saw it at AFI Fest. Uh, it's a great movie. Such such a great movie. Um, well, okay, maybe not great. It, it, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'll leave it at that. Flea, another great movie. What just won my uh, best documentary? Um, what about Captain Zatari? I haven't seen that, but it might be a good film. I I've heard things about them about that movie. What about the worst person in the world. What do you think about that? You think I'm stretching the runtime? Okay. Fair, fair. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just go then. Hmm. You want me to just tell you? Okay, cool. Uh, it's uh, the worst person in the world. It is the worst person in the world. Past me can't tell you a lot about this, but future me is probably having a field day day in the comments. I was the tiebreaker on this one. It was a tie between Petite Maman. The worst person in the world, I'm your man, and flee. I was the one who picked I'm your man, so I conceded. So we went with the worst person in the world, because I think that is a better film. Uh, as a future me will attest to in the comments. So those are the 2021 Real Awards. Uh, apologies for the lack of decorum. Uh, and the lack of spiffiness. But uh, Fit Check got uh, earbuds in this. But uh, I am so grateful for how many of you have joined. Uh, I don't know how many of you have joined to watch this. Um, even if it's just five, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, when I started Austin B Media and the Real Awards, I never, ever, ever in my life thought it could, I'd still be going two years later. Um, I, I if you had told me two years ago, I'd be, I'd be still doing this. I would have said, you know, I'd like that, but you know, if it doesn't work out, fine. But as I find myself celebrating my second year of Austin B Media, or phase, phase three, which you'll hear about later today, right after this broadcast, actually. Um, I am grateful 
for all the people who have lifted me up, who have helped me, um, who have just helped keep this uh, beast of, of a uh, website alive. I mean, the first time I got an AFI vest, that was crazy. I didn't think I would get in, and then all of a sudden I got in. Then I got into Tribeca last year. And then, and then, and then I got into AFI Docs and Bentonville Film Festival and a bunch of other things. And it's just insane. Um, now that I think about it, it's just people have been pumping so much love into this. Um, and I will be et eternally grateful is the word. I'm trying not to say this up. Tearing up. Um, I'd still be watching YouTube videos on my phone if it wasn't for you guys um, and, and you people on the internet, um, rather. Um, it, it has been one of the greatest joys of my life these past two years to sit here and talk about the stuff I love. Who gets to do that? Not many people. Um, it's, I, I take it for granted a lot more often than I think. Um, I, you know, coming up here today, I was like, you know, I don't really like working on the weekends, but I, at the end of this recording, I'm finding myself, you know, thankful just that I get, I'm able to do this. If, if I didn't have your support, I wouldn't have afforded this microphone that I'm speaking into. I couldn't have afforded half the stuff. I would have been gone. Um, the website, I mean, sorry. Uh, the website would have been gone in its first year. I had no... It, it, it was such a let's try it and see if it works kind of thing that... I was not. I, I was putting one hand on the doorknob, the per, proverbial doorknob, or the, or whatever you want to call it, to be like, okay, I'll go get a job. You know, um, I'll I'll go get a real job, and and I'm so grateful that I'm not having to do that yet. Um, and who knows? Maybe one day I I will have to grow up and get a normal job um but i like that i've built this for myself and that you got you people on the internet um jokes to tr reference to tropic thunder not intended um have been so willing and comforting to just say yeah we'll click on that article that you made about halo and uh, moon knight and I mean, I, I get to talk about Moon Knight. That's crazy. That's crazy. But getting back to it, um, getting back to the subject of the real awards, um, this is one phase of the real awards. I'm not always going to be, you know, with headphones on and uh, all this all connected and webcam in front of a tree. Um... That's not my intention. In fact, I think some of the reason that I didn't do it's this televised thing or whatever you would call this um, sooner is I wanted the production design to exist. I wanted a big red curtain behind me, me in a tux. I was going to rent a tux just for this one thing. Um, and that sounds insane because it is insane. Um, but yeah, um, anyways, this is one phase, I can't wait to see which, what phase two of the real awards look like, if maybe we get more voters, maybe I get more voters, maybe I start getting screeners from uh, studios that I don't normally get screeners from, that I can't wait to see what happens, but I will see you again the mid-year real awards probably this June 
maybe July if Trebek is not uh, as copacetic uh, or whatever, you know? Th things happen around June, like E3. Um, well, not this year, but, you know, E3 in quotes. But, uh, yeah, uh, stick around on austinb.media and also stick around here because I will be announcing all my Phase 3 stuff um, right after this. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, this is Austin Belzer, signing off.